أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوما الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم نحمد هو نصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شرع لكم من الدين ما وصى به نوح والذي أوحينا إليك وما وصينا به إبراهيم وموسى وعيسى أن أقيم الدين ولا تتفرقوا فيه قبر على المشركين ما تدعوهم إليه الله يجتبي إليه من يشاء ويهدي إليه من ينيب وما تفرقوا إلا من بعد ما جاهم العلم بغيا بينهم ولولا كلمة سبقت من ربك إلى أجل مسمى لقضي بينهم وإن الذين أورثوا الكتاب من بعدهم لفي شك منه مريب فَلِذَلِكَ فَدْعُ وَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتَ وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَهْآهُمْ وَقُلْ آمَنْتُ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ مِنْ كِتَابٍ وَأُمِرْتُ لِأَعْدِلَ بَيْنَكُمْ اللَّهُ رَبُّنَا وَرَبُّكُمْ لَنَا أَعْمَالُنَا وَلَكُمْ أَعْمَالُكُمْ لَا حُجَّةَ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ اللَّهُ يَجْمَعُ بَيْنَنَا وَإِلَيْهِ الْمَصِيرُ صدق الله العظيم We had already read ayah number 13 of Surah Al-Shura, but let us again translate it because the two ayat which are coming after that, they three go to make one group. And to understand the coming two ayat, it's necessary to refresh in your mind what we have read in ayah 13. Shara alakum for you, O followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We have ordained bin ad deen as a deen, na wasabihi nuhan. What we ordained to Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam. Walazi awhina ilayk. And what we have revealed to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. Wama wasayna bihi Ibrahim wa Musa wa Isa. And what we enjoined upon Ibrahim and Musa and Isa. An aqimu ad deen. So that you establish this deen. Wala tatafarraku fihi. And don't be divided regarding this deen and the qamatul deen. As for those whom you are calling, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, regarding the ummiyeen, the mushrikeen of Arab, kabura ala al-mushrikeen ma tad'uhum ilayhi. It's very hard, very harsh for them to accept what you are calling them. Ma tad'uhum ilayhi. Allahu yajtabi ilayhi man yasha. But Allah will, you know, He will choose and pull towards him, whomsoever he likes. وَيَحْدِي إِلَيْهِ مَنْ يُنِيبُ And he will definitely guide towards him, whosoever wishes to be guided. As for the other group, the people of the book, وَمَا تَفَرَّقُوا إِلَّا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاهُمُ الْعِلْمُ بَغْيًا بَيْنَهُ Don't hope that they will accept you. Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم had the idea that these people were ignorant. They never knew any Sharia, any Nabi, any Rasul. But you know these Jews, these Christians, they know, they know Torah, they know Injil, they know all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they say they believe in Allah, and at least, you know, at the face of it, at least the Jews, you know, they are monotheists, they are muwahidun, they are not mushrik at all. And even the Christians, you know, although they are the worst mushriks, but they say one in three and three in one. This is trinity in unity and unity in trinity. They also claim that we, we believe in one God. These are the three aspects of the same Godhead. So 
there was hope that these people might join and come and respond and accept this deen. But Allah says, no. Don't entertain any such hopes, O Muhammad. Because, وَمَا تَفَرَّقُوا إِلَّا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاهُمُ الْعِلْمُ They have differed from each other bitterly after the knowledge had come to them. They believe in the same Old Testament, the Jews and the Christians, the same Old Testament. That is common between them, but they are bitter enemies of each other. So, what is the reason? Baghiyam bainahum. You know, this jealousy among human beings and the urge to dominate, as Adler says, that one of the basic instincts in human beings is the urge to dominate. So, why should we accept their creed? It means they will be above us. Why should I accept what Muhammad is calling for? It means I have to follow him then. I will have to obey him. So this jealousy and this urge to dominate is the reason why people reject, although their hearts testify that this is correct. Because in the case of the Jews, at least for their ulama, the learned people among the Jews, Quran says in, at more than one places, Yarifunahu kama yarifuna abnahum. They recognize Muhammad and Quran sallallahu alayhi wasallam just as they recognize their own sons. But still, they were the worst enemies. Why? Jealousy. Baghyam bainahum. And actually this subject, that all these, you know, schisms in the world and uh, mankind, they are on the basis of this baghyam bainahum. This subject came in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 213, then Ali Ibrahim, Ayah 19, then now here, and for the fourth time it will come in Surah Al-Jasiyah, Ayah 17. This Baghiyam Bainahum is the root cause. The urge to dominate is the root cause. The jealousy among people is the root cause. وَلَوْلَا كَلِمَةٌ سَبَقَتْ مِنْ رَبِّكَ إِلَىٰ جَلِ الْمُسَمَّى And had not a word of your Lord passed already for a fixed time of period, fixed period of time, all matters between them would have been decided. Allah has kept these things for decision, for the day of judgment. Otherwise, in this very world, these things would have been decided. And verily, those who inherited the books after them, the book was given to Musa and Bani Israel, they inherited. The book was given to Jesus and his Havariyin, they inherited it. But you know when this, those people who inherit the books, after some time, the fi shakki min humurib, they themselves come in doubts about that book. And you know, very disturbing doubts, they surround them. So you, Muhammad, don't hope. Neither these mushrikeen, ummiyeen, are going to accept you easily, nor there can be an easy acceptance for you from among the people of the book. <coughs> but, but you keep on calling for this. Perseverance in calling. This dawa, this call should continue, 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 whether somebody is accepting or not. And we have the example that Hazrat Inu and Asratu Wasalam kept calling people for 950 years. We have read it in Surah Al-Ankabut. Now count here. These are the commandments coming to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they are the commandments to every da'i, which from among his followers, because this ummah has to go till the end of this world. The Prophet said, Ana akhirul mursaleen, prantum akhirul umam. I am the last messenger and you are the last ummah. So we have to continue. So people will be coming. And they will call towards the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, walking in the footsteps of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And for them also, these are the instructions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For every da'i of deen. Falizalika fadru, number one. You go on calling for this, iqamatu deen. For nothing less. Wastaqim kama uwirta. And you stand and persevere as you have been commanded. You don't swerve due to pressures from this side or that side. These mushrikeen will be pressurizing you, as we saw in Surah Yunus. Muhammad presents some other Quran or makes some changes in it. This Quran is too rigid, we can't accept it. And in the same way in Surah Bani Israel, 
بھائی کاد لا یفتن کا دل لذی اور نہ لے کا لفتری آ لے نہ غیرہ سو پریشر وڈ کم ٹو یو فرام دس سائڈ آلسو فرام دیٹ سائڈ آلسو بٹ بس تقین کما الٹا ولا تر احوا ڈونٹ فالو دیئر وش از دن لس وقل اینڈ سی آ من تو بے ماں عزل اللہ من کتاب ان آئی ہیو ٹوٹل فیتھ ان دی بک دیٹ اللہ سبحان و تعالی از ہیز سینڈ ٹو می وہ امر تو لے آ دے لا بین تم نمبر فائیو آئی ہیو بن کمانڈیڈ ٹو اسٹیبلش جسٹس امنگس یو دس از دی موسٹ امپورٹنٹ پارٹ آف اٹ دیٹ ڈونٹ تھنک دیٹ آئی ایم اونلی اے سرمن گیور نو آئی ہیو کم ٹو اسٹیبلش جسٹس to do away with all forms of exploitation all forms of repression discrimination injustices exploitations and to establish system of justice over here i come for that i am not a storyteller i am not a poet i am not only a sermon sayer a wise comes to this locality and he says a very makes a very good speech and then he accepts some you know something which is presented to him and goes to the other town and there again he is speaking it it is a profession i am not one of them don't take me to be a sermon sayer umir to liya de la bainako i have been commanded to establish justice between you allah rabbuna wa rabbukum now as far as your opposition to my mission allah is our lord and your lord also lana amaluna wa lakum amalukum for us will be the results of what we are doing and for you will be the results of what you are doing la hujjata bainana wa bainakum there is no use of any argument among us why to fight allah yajma'u bainana allah will gather us together wa ilayhi almaseer maybe after some time we get we get together we can see this say these words to the different movements among the muslims they are working for islam but the methodologies are different you know maybe emphasis is different some are more emphasizing on the personal characters other emphasize more the the political aspect etc etc all are sincere no nobody you know is dishonest so if we can say to each other allah aur rabbuna aur rabbukum our lord and your lord is the same lana amaluna wa lakum amalukum what ever we are doing if they are accepted to allah subhanahu wa taala But we shall get the reward. If rejected, then we shall be the losers. And if what you are doing, the results will come to you. La hujjata bainu na wa bainu. There is no need of fighting between us. Why this argument? Allah hu yajma wa bainu. Maybe tomorrow, day after, we come together. We agree on some one program. That's possible. Allah hu yajma wa bainu na. He might bring us together, or at least ilahil masir. one day we shall be standing all before allah subhanahu wa taala there we shall be all together and then everybody should know will come to know where he stood what was his position how much he was correct and how much he was wrong so no need no need of argument and no need of fighting wal ladina yuhajjuna fi allah min baad ma mustajib lahu and those as for those who are arguing concerning allah subhanahu wa taala although his call has been acknowledged by many people hujjatuhum dahidatun inda rabbihim their excuse and argument is void with their lord wa alayhim ghadabun upon them will come the wrath of allah subhanahu wa taala wa lahum azabun shadid and for them is the severe chastisement this concerns those people who had seen people making sacrifices for the deen of allah you know in the beginning of every revolutionary movement because people see it's a hard task the society will retort it will come against you you will be in difficult difficulty when you say your system is wrong they will say you have gone crazy it's all right in our system we want status quo so only those people who have extraordinary courage they care to come forward and say oh this is wrong and we want to rectify it so people who don't have that much courage they keep behind but when some people have come forward and they have set examples of courage 
and how fortitude they show and how much of forbearance they show, then you know the excuse of the others is gone. Now they should see that they are also human beings. They have done this. They have achieved this. So why can't I do it? I am also a human being. So now their excuse is, you know, they are without any weight in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is he who has sent down the book of his Allah is he who has sent down the book with truth and mizan and the balance. Balance is the symbol for justice. You see, mostly outside the courts, in, outside the Supreme Court in Islamabad, Pakistan, and High Court in Lahore, we have in this picture of a uh, of a balance because balance means justice. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has sent the book, the law. What's the purpose of that law? To establish justice. Now, if justice is not established, you go on reading law and get so out. That's all. What's it? This book was not sent for only reading and reciting and getting so up. You have to establish it. What's use reading it? What do you gain? Lastum ala shayn hatta tuqim utawrat awal injil. Pull. Ya ahl al kitab. Lastum ala shayn hatta tuqim utawrat awal injil. Say to them, O oh people of big book. You have no position whatsoever unless you establish Torah and Injil. Then you can come to us, talk to us. Ya al Quran, lastum ala shayn hatta tuqim al Quran. Oh, you people who believe in Quran, you have no standing whatsoever unless you establish Quran. Then pray to us. We shall listen to your prayers. You have thrown Quran on your backs, and you go and pray to us. We are not going to listen to your prayers. These prayers of yours will be thrown into your faces. And this is what is happening today. Daily, Dua Qurut in Masjid Nabi, Masjid Harab, both. But to what use? Allah is not listening. Dua Qurut for so long in 1971. What happened to Pakistan? It was split into two. Allah didn't listen. Did you establish our deen? We gave you Pakistan, we gave you the country, we gave you the freedom. What did you do? So this is it. وَالَّذِينَ يُحَاجُّونَ فِي اللَّهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَسْتُجِيبَ لَهُ حُجَّتُهُمْ دَاحِذَةٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ وَعَلَيْهِمْ غَضَبٌ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ اللہ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ وَالْمِيزَانِ These words, بِالْحَقِّ وَالْمِيزَانِ Kitab and Mizan, they have appeared twice in Quran together. In this surah, surah to shura and then surah al hadith. Lakad arsalna rusulana bil bayyinat wa anzalna maahumul kitab wal mizan ala yakum al nasu bil qist. We send down with our messengers the book and the balance so that people should abide by justice. Wa ma yudri ka laal lafaat akarib. And how can you know maybe that that hour has come near? That hour when Reckoning will be for every each person, you know, what you did, what you were required to do, and what you actually did. Those who don't believe in the hour and the day of judgment, they want to hasten it. Bring it, bring it, Muhammad. You have been threatening us for so long a time. Now bring it. Because they don't believe in it. Those who believe in Akhirah, in that Asara, they are fearful of it. They tremble with the idea that they will have to stand before their Lord. And they know this is the truth, that our will come and that day of judgment will come. Allah in the Ladina Yubarun of Sat in the Fi Dalal in Bahid, behold those people who have doubts about this hour, they are have they have gone very far off astray. Allah Latifum their body or Zukuman Yasha Wahual Kabiyul Aziz. Now, if a person he accepts this mission for his life, I will live for Allah, will die for Allah. I devote myself 
فرد استقامت الدین فرد اسلامی الدین اف اللہ ناؤ دی آئیڈیاز کم فرام سیٹن بٹ ول یو ایٹ بٹ اباؤٹ یور فیملی یو آر ڈیوٹنگ یور سیلف بٹ ول ہیپن ٹو یور فیملی یور ڈیپینڈنٹس یور سیلف یور چلڈرن دے نیڈ ایجوکیشن یور ڈاٹرس یو ہیو ٹو گیٹ دے میریڈ سو وٹ ہیپن ٹو یو یو ہیو گون کریزی دی آنسر از ہیئر اللہ لطیف عباد ہی اللہ از ویری سٹرلی اویئر آف دی نیڈ آف ہز سروینٹس ہی نوز اینڈ آئی ڈیوٹ مائی سر ٹو اللہ ہی نوز وٹ آئی نیڈ اینڈ ہی ول پرووائڈ می ود اٹ ہی ہیز آل دی اتھارٹی ان ہز ہینڈ ہاؤ از اٹ پاسبل یو ڈیوٹ یور سیلف ٹو سم بگ چیف فار فار ایگزامپل سم بگ لینڈ لارڈ Will he not look after your needs? Allah, the Malikul Mulk, if you devote yourself for him, he will not take care of you. Even you don't know what you need. He need, knows what you need. We never knew what is vitamin C and what is vitamin E and what is vitamin A. But these things had been provided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have come to know later on that we needed these things. اللہ لطیف ہوں گے عبادی یار سکو میں یہ شاہ ہی گیو سسٹیننس ٹو ہوم سو ایور ہی وشز وہ ہوا القوی العزیز اینڈ ہی از دی اسٹرانگ اینڈ مائٹی ہی کین پرووائڈ یو ہی کین گیو یو سسٹیننس من کانا یورید ہر سال آخرت نظر لہو فی ہر سے ہی ہو سو ایور ایمز ایٹ دی ریوارڈ آف آخرہ آئی ٹول یو بیفور آلسو دس از دی کرکس آف دی میٹر You want dunya or akhirah? If you want dunya, Allah will give you. Work hard and you will get something. Maybe not everything that you want, but at least, you know, something He will give you. But if you want akhirah, the year after, for that you have to work. Man kana yuridu harsal akhirat Whosoever decides that He needs And he desires the Akhira, the reward of Akhira. Nazid lahu fi harsi. We shall keep on increasing in his rewards. Vaman kana yuridu harsa dunya and whosoever desires the reward of this world, nutihi minha. We shall give him from this. Okay. You can have a better house. You can have a bigger television set. You can have these things. Be happy with these things. نوتہی منہا وما لہو فی الاخرت من نصیب but for him then there is no share in the hereafter there he will be at zero ام لہو سرکاو شراو لہو من الدین مالم یازم بہ اللہ a very important point these false gods who were associated with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they were worshipped but none of them gave any deen to those who worshipped them. Has Hubble or Laat or Uzza or Manat, has they given you some law, some rules, some guidance? Has some book been revealed from them? Nothing. It's one-way traffic. You are worshipping and worshipping and worshipping. What are you are getting from them? If you worship Allah, He guides you. Allah has given you this book. Allah has given you the law. Allah has given you the perfect political, social, economic system of justice. Ham lahum surakao sharau lahum min ad-deen maalam yazum bihillah. Do they have such associators with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who have ordained for them a religion for which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not allowed? That means there's none. Walau la kalimatun fasli la qudiyya bainahum. If The word of final judgment had not passed earlier. Final judgment will come on the day of judgment, not here. Then everything could have been decided among them at once. And for these evildoers, there is a very painful chastisement. On that day, on the day of judgment, you will see, O Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, The evil doers will be fearful on account of what they had earned. They knew it. 
what we did in the life of the world. Everybody knows. Mali insanu ala nafsi bashira, wala alqa maazira. Everybody knows where he stands. So they'll be fearful what is going to happen to them. Well, as in Amanu Amanu Salihat, on the other hand, those who had believed and who had done good deeds, fi rozatin jannat. They will be in the meadows of the gardens. Lahum ayashaun in the Rabbihim. For them, there will be everything that they will desire. Zalika hu al fadul kabir. Definitely, this is the greatest bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Zalika al-lazi yubashirullahu ibadahu al-lazi na'amanu. This is the reward which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given glad tidings to those, to those servants of His who came to believe and did good deeds. Kul la salukum alayhi ajran. Say to these people, these people of Makkah and Arabia, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I don't demand from you any wages, any labor, any reward from the services that I am rendering. I am coming to you, reciting to you these ayat. There were poets in that society. When they recited some poem, they wanted some, some inam, you know. There should be something. Have I ever asked for you? Asked you for anything? One thing I do ask, and that is that you should have regard for the kinship. I am a relative of yours. I am from Bani Hashim. And this is a clan of Quraysh. I am a Karshi. I am from this very land, Makkah. I am the son of this soil. At least if you don't accept me, if you don't Accept my dawah. Don't oppose me. Don't call bad names for me. Don't say I am a majnoon. I am crazy. I am a liar. I am taking a dictation from somebody. And then saying that this is a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At least you should have regard of the relationship which I have with you. وَمَنْ يَقْتَرِفْ حَسَنَةً And whoso have scores a good deed if somebody from among you supports me, helps me. Nazid lahu fiha husna. We shall increase for him in it goodness, virtues. Inna Allah ghafurun shakur verily. Allah is forgiving and appreciating. Am yaqulun uftara Allah kasiban. Do they say that he has forged a lie on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That is, he has composed this Quran himself and he is saying this is being revealed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِنْ يَشَاءِ اللَّهُ يَقْتِمَ لَا قَلْبِكَ So if Allah wishes, O Muhammad, He can put a seal on your heart, then nothing will come. Because heart is the place where Qur'an descends. فَإِنَّهُ نَزَّلَهُ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ This Qur'an was revealed to the heart of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. If a seal is put, this will finish. Allah can do it. We had this ayah, you know, in Surah Bani Israel. If you wish, we can take away from you the revelation we have already given you. And here it is say, say, being said that if we wish, we can put a seal on your heart. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blots out the falsehood. And He proves the truth to be true with His commands, His words. إِنَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِذَاتِ الصُّدُورِ Verily, He knows what is there in the hearts and minds of the people. وَهُوَ الَّذِي يَقْبَلُ الطَّوْبَةَ عَنِ بَعْدِهِ And He is who accepts the repentance from His bondsmen and servants. وَيَعْفُ عَنِ السَّيَّاتِ And He pardons evil deeds. وَيَعْلَمُ مَا تَفَرُونَ He will know what you are doing. وَيَسْتَجِيبُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And He answers the prayers of those who believe and who do good deeds, وَيَزِيدُهُمْ مِنْ فَصْلِهِ Whatever they want, ask for, I give them. And I add to it from my own bounty. وَالْكَافِرُونَ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ As for those disbelievers who are rejecting this, for them is a severe chastisement. وَلَوْ بَسَطَ اللَّهُ رِزْقَ الْعِبَادِ لَبَغَوْا فِي الْأَرْضِ If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had expanded the sustenance for the people in this world, 
plenty of everything for everybody. La bagafil ard. Then they would have revolted and rebelled in this land. Now they have to somehow, sometime they have to ask me, Oh Allah, give me food. Oh Allah, give me this. But had we provided them everything in plenty, nobody would have ever turned his face towards us. La bagafil ard. Walati yunazzilu bi qadri maisha. Nay, he sends with estimates and mayor whatever he wishes. In the hube badhi khabirum basir. Verily, he is with his servants. Khabir, he is aware of their conditions and he is seeing them. Wa huwa ladhi yunazzilu al-ghaisa min baad ma qanatu. And he is Allah who sends down the rain after they become despaired. Drought, rain has not come. Our fields will remain barren. But then rain comes. وَهُوَ الَّذِي يُنَزِّلُ الْغَيْسَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا قَنَتُ Pointed the spirit. But then Allah sends down rain. وَيَنْشُرُ رَحْمَتَهُ And He spreads His mercy. وَهُوَ الْوَلِيُّ الْحَمِيدِ And He is the protector and praiseworthy. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ خَلْقُ السَّبَاوَاتِ وَالْنَرْضِ Among His signs are the creation of heaven and earth. وَمَا بَسَّ فِيهِمَا مِنْ دَعَبَّتٍ And the moving creatures which He has spread in both. In the heavens also, the malaika, the angels, they are moving about. On the earth, all types of animals, then human beings. وَبَسَّ فِي إِمَامٍ دَعَبَّتٍ وَهُوَ عَلَىٰ جَمْعِهِمْ إِذَا يَشَاءُ قَدِيرٍ Whosoever has spread them, he can collect them also. One day will come, He will gather them all, and He is powerful over it. وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ عَدِيكُمْ Whatever affliction or misfortune comes upon you, it is due to what your own hands have earned. وَيَعْفُوا أَنْ كَسِيرٌ And He pardons also a lot of it. A lot of your mistakes and sins, Allah pardons. But some of these things, you know, in this very world, You are given some punishment. You are you cannot defeat us, defeat Allah in the in the land, in the earth. Baba lakum min dun illahi min wali wala nasir. Nor there is for you any protector or helper besides Allah. Wamin ayate hil jawari fil bahri kal alam. From his signs is another one. The ships like mountains. And they are sailing upon the seas. In Yasha Yuskini Riha. If Allah decides, He can cause the wind to stop. You know, those were the days when, you know, the steamships were not there, and now we have very big ships. But when only the wind was the means, and Badbani Kashtiya Jabhoti, to Usbeka, in Yasha Yuskini Riha. If he likes, he can cause the wind to stop. So your boats and ships would stand motionless on the surface of water. In this are the signs for those people who are persevering and grateful. Or he can drown them, drown the ships due to what they have earned. But he pardons a lot. وَيَعْلَمَ الَّذِينَ يُجَادِلُونَ فِي آيَاتِنَا So that people who argue and dispute our revelations, they will come to know مَا لَهُمْ مِنْ مَحِيسِ They will have no escape. When you know the ship drowns, no escape. Now, eight ayat are coming. And they are, again, very important regarding the axis of this surah. اِقَامَتُ الدِّينَ The struggle for اِقَامَتُ الدِّينَ Now, whosoever makes a decision, he devotes himself for the struggle. There are certain qualities that he should produce in him. Some characteristics of character. Everybody cannot do. You have to qualify first. So what are those qualities? You can count. Number one. فَمَا أُوتِيتُمْ مِنْ شَيْنْ فَمَتَاوُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Whatsoever you are given in this world, 
take it that it is only a means of living in this world. It's not the real wealth. وَمَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا What is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is much better and lasting for those who believe in Allah. You know, this world should become small in their eyes. It should not be the objective of human beings to get this world. No, it's very small. Allah has made me very great. Allah bore all the, all the angels before me. What is this world for me? In the dunya khuliqat lakum, there is a hadith. This world has been created for you. And you have been created. Vantum khuliqtum lil akhirah. You have been created for akhirah. This world is nothing. This is for you already. He is subjected to you everything which is here. Serving you. The sun, the moon, the stars, everything. So, number one is that one should understand. The importance of this worldly wealth should diminish in his eyes. And he should fix his gaze on the blessings of Akhra. Number two, وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ They should put their trust wholly and solely in Allah. Not, I can do it. No, no. My trust is in only Allah. I can try. But the result will be in the hands of Allah. I can't do anything without His support, without His help. Tawakkul totally on Allah. Do whatever you can. Don't sit down. Do whatever you can. But your trust should not be in the material means that you have gathered or your own intelligence. No. Trust in God. Number three. وَالَّذِينَ يَجْتَنِبُونَ كَبَائِرَ الْإِسْمِ وَالْفَوَاحِشِ And those who shun the heinous sins and indecencies. The bigger crimes. There are smaller crimes also. Don't worry for them. Allah will wash them off. Bigger crimes. Shirk. Killing anybody. Adultery. Telling a lie. These are the things, biggest crimes. If you shun these big, bigger crimes and the indecencies, fahsha, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep on washing your smaller crimes. This subject has been repeated in the Quran thrice. And this is very important. There are, you might have seen certain people who become very conscious of the small things, trivial things. But if you look deep into their lives, they are very cautious of the trivial things, but the bigger sins, they are continuing. They are involved in riba, the biggest haram in Islam. But for smaller things, they are fighting with each other. This is a special character, traditional religious people. But here what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying to us? You take care of the bigger things, the bigger crimes, the bigger muharramat, and I'll wash off your smaller crimes. This is in Surah An-Nisa, and then finally in Surah An-Najm, in the 27th part of Quran. Number four, وَإِذَا مَا غَزِبُوهُمْ يَغْفِرُونَ And when they become angry, they pardon and forgive. For a die, it is very essential. If you say, I have to take the revenge, he has done this thing all to me, I must do, I must give him the reply in the same coin, well then you are not a die. For dies, it is necessary. Take verbal persecution and you just take them patiently and forgive people. As you have heard so many times, the prayer of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah maqfid qawmi. Allah mahdi qawmi. Nawnda ya'alamun. Oh my Lord. Just give guidance to these people of mine. Whatever they are doing, they don't know what they are doing. They are stoning me. They are throwing stones on me. But to Allah they don't know what they are doing. So give them the guidance. Wa idha ma ghazibu hum yaghfirun. 
نمبر فائیو استجاب ہو ریسپونڈ ٹو دی کال آف دی لارڈ اینڈ وٹ از دی کال آف دی لارڈ ان دس سورا اونلی ون کال آف دی لارڈ از کم عقیم الدین ولا تفر رکوفی ڈیڈ یو ہیو اینی اقابت السلاد ہیئر اپ ٹل ناؤ ناٹ ناؤ اٹ ول کم بٹ اپ ٹل لاؤ ناٹ دی اونلی کال از ان عقیم الدین دی اونلی تھنگ فار بی ڈنگ ولا تفر رکوفی ریگارڈنگ دین اینڈ اسٹیبلشمنٹ آف دین یو شوڈ اینڈ ڈیفر But regarding the details of Sharia, you can have differences of opinion. No harm. Fiqh Hanafi and Fiqh Maliki and so on, no harm. But Deen is the same. And the struggle of Iqamat of Deen, that should be joint. وَالَّذِينَ اسْتَجَابُوا لِرَبِّهِمْ They say, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَ لَبَّيْكَ We are present. I devote myself to the struggle of establishment of your Deen. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, accept me. وَلَذِينَ اسْتَجَابُوا لِرَبِّهِمْ وَاقَامُ السَّلَاحِ نَا كَوْزِ and establish prayer to have a direct contact and strong contact with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this five times prayer a day is most essential because in this worldly business you get lost you just forget you have to renew your pledge اِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِيهِ a very beautiful couplet of حفیظ جلندری سرکشی نے کر دیے دھندلے نقوش بندگی دی ایروگنس ود ان می ہیو میڈ دی مارکس آف مائی بانڈ مین ہوڈ دیر بٹ دی مارکس دیٹ آئی ایم دی بانڈ مین آف اللہ بٹ ڈیوٹی ایروگنس دے ہیو بن واسٹ آف آؤ سجدے میں گریں لوہے جبی تازہ کریں Let us prostrate before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have that imprint of the bondsmanship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala renewed on our foreheads. Our sajdeh mein gireh, lohe jabi taza kare. Wa amruhum shura bainahum, number seven. And they have to decide their matters by mutual consultation. No authoritarianism. Nobody should say that I am the total wisdom and total knowledge oh, no. you have to consult with each other the party affairs should be done by mutual consultation and whatever we have given to them they spent for every struggle you need money to establish the deen of Allah you need money to go to war for the cause of Allah you need money for weapons For rations, everything. For the propagation, you need money. For me, Maharajat Nahum Yun Fikun. These three ayat on this subject, again let me say, are the most profound ayat. Ayat 13, 14, 15, then ayat 36, 37, 38. <laughs> But now, something different is coming. And those whom, if there is something wrong done to them, they take revenge. This is contrary to what we have been talking before. In Surah Amin Sayyidah, Idfa billati asan, you have to forgive. But here, because this is the Surah of Iqamat al-Deen, Iqamat al-Deen means Iqamat of justice, establishment of justice. And that justice requires that if something wrong is done to somebody, he can take revenge. When that system will be established, there will be a system of kisas, revenge. If somebody has murdered somebody, he should lose his life. Or be only the wali of the person who was murdered, he can pardon him, nobody else. No head of the state has the power or authority to pardon him. So, وَالَّذِينَ اِذَا أَصَابَهُمْ بَغْيُهُمْ يَنْتَسِرُونَ There is nothing bad in it. وَجَزَاءُ سَيِّئَةٍ سَيِّئَةٌ مِسْلُحَا And the reward of an evil thing is an evil thing equal to it. 
Don't go beyond it. What injury he has given to you, the same you can give to your to other person, not more than that. Saman afar waslaha, now persuasion. But whosoever pardons and makes peace, fajruhu an Allah. His reward is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Innahu la yuhibbu zalimeen. Verily he doesn't like and love the evil doers. Wala man intasara ba'da zulmihi. Anyhow, whosoever takes revenge after he was wronged, فَأُولَاءِ كَمَا عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ سَبِيلِ There is no way of blame to them. You can't say that you have done something wrong. No, it is his right. If he demands revenge, it is his right. وَلَمَنْ اِنْتَصَرَ بَعْدَ ذُلْمِهِ فَأُولَاءِ كَمَا عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ سَبِيلِ إِنَّمَا السَّبِيلُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ The blame is for those الَّذِينَ يَزْلِمُونَ النَّاسِ who oppress mankind وَيَبْغُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ and they rebel in the earth wrongly. They become the exploiters. They become the oppressors. We are high up, you are low. We are Brahmins. You are Shudra. Who are you? You can't even hear the words of scriptures. If by chance a word of the Hindu scriptures passes into the ear of a Shudra, you know, molten lead will be thrown in the, in the ear and made him, make him deaf. Oh, no. All human beings by birth are equal. No higher, no lower. No superior, no inferior. No high, no low. So this injustice is on the basis of the color of the skin, on the basis of races, on the basis of professions. It's a menial profession, no, no. Any labor, it's, it should be respectful. He's working. And you know, whosoever earns his livelihood by working by hand, the Prophet has said, he is the best earner. So what's with hand? إِنَّمَا السَّبِيلُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ يَزْلِمُونَ النَّاسَ وَيَبْغُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ The blame is to those who oppress the people and they Rebel in the land without any right. For them, there is a very painful chastisement. In the end again. But whosoever takes it patiently and forgives. Now this is of very high level. This is a very strong character is needed for this, to forgive, then you can take the revenge. If you can't take the revenge, well, what you can do? Nothing. But if you can take the revenge, and then you don't, and you pardon, and you forgive, and you make peace, it's of a very high character. And whosoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent astray, you won't find for him, after him, any protector. And you will see these evil doers. When they will see the chastisement before their eyes, they will say, is there any way to go back? You will see them. They will be presented to the fire. This is the hell and they are standing. And they will be humbled with disgrace. Yandruguna min tarfin khafi. They will only be having a stealthy glance seeing from the corner. Can't lift their eyes. Waqala lazina amanu. And then those who had believed, they would say, Inna al khasrin al lazina khasiru anfusham wa ahlihim yawm al qiyama. Verily, the real losers are those. Who bear them, themselves the losers, and not only themselves, also their families. Because their families are following them. They were going on the same road. So they have brought them also to the greatest loss. Allah inna zalimina fi azami muqim. Behold, these evildoers will be 
in a lasting chastisement. And they will not have any protectors, young Surunahum in Dunillah, who will be able to help them beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wama Yuzdillah of Malahum in Sabil, and whosoever, whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent astray, he will not find any way for him. Now the two ayat again of the same importance. Three plus three, and now two. Istajibu li rabbikum. Say yes to the call of Allah. Say labbaik to the call of Allah. Answer the call of your Lord. And what is the call? An naqeebu deen wa la tadhavarrakufi. All the other things are subservient to this. The call basically is in ayah number 13. Shara alakum min ad-deen ma wassa bihi nuhan wal lazi awhayna ilayk. وَمَا وَسَيْنَا بِهِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَمُوسَىٰ وَعِيسَىٰ أَنَقِيمُ الدِّينَ وَلَا تَتَفَرَّقُوا فِيهِ اسْتَجِيبُوا لِرَبِّكُمْ Respond positively to the call of your Lord. مِنْ قَبْلِ اَنْ يَعْتِيَ يَوْمٌ Before that time, that day comes, لَا مَرَدَّ لَهُ مِنَ اللَّهِ That time comes by the command of Allah, which will not be able to be turned back. It can mean your death, the day of your death. When that comes, it won't go back. And the hour for the whole world. That day you will not have any refuge. And there will not be possible any denial from your side that we didn't do it. Oh, okay. And as I said, one button, post, and the whole film of his whole life will come <laughs> to start. Today we can understand these things very easily. Fine Aradu, but then, O oh Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if they don't call back, don't respond to your call, don't say la back to Allah. Fine Aradu, if they turn away, from our Sallallahu Alaihi Hafiza. So we have not sent you our guard. You are not responsible. In alayka illa al There's no responsibility on you except the conveying of the message. Wa'inna iza azakna l-insana minna rahmatan. And the strange thing is that when we make man taste our mercy, fariha biha. He rejoices with it. Wa'in tusibhum sayyatun. And if something bad comes to them, bima qaddamat adihim, due to what their own hands have sent forward, final insana kafur, then this man becomes totally ingrateful. Lillahi mulku samawati wal ard. The concluding ayat of this surah, very profound. Lillahi mulku samawati wal ard. To Allah belongs the sovereignty and kingdom of the heavens and the earth. Yakhluku ma yasha. He creates whatever he likes. Yabo leban yashao in asa. He gives only daughters to whom he wishes. But yabo leban yashao zakur. And to whom he wishes, he gives sons only, no daughter. Aw yuzad yu, aw yuzad vijo hum zukrana. Wa in asa. Aw. He mingles them males and females, daughters and sons both. Wa yajalo man yashao akima. And he makes whomsoever he likes barren. No son, no daughter. Having gone to all the corners of the world, all treatments, no way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not given you. Innahu alimun qadir, verily, he is all knowing, all powerful. Now is coming, you know, the subject of wahi. Wama kana le basharin an yukallimahu Allah. The position of man is not such that Allah should talk, talk to him. Allah can talk to him. Allah is all-powerful. But Allah is very high. You are very low. It's not for you that Allah should talk to you directly. Illa wahyan. There are three ways of communication, divine communication to human beings. Number one, wahyan. 
direct inspiration into the heart of the people. Aw bin waraa hijab, or from behind a curtain, just as Allah talked to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Aw yursila rasoolan, from number three, or he sends a messenger, an angel, fayuhiya bezdhi ma yasha, and then he reveals to that person whatever Allah desires. So three modes, direct wahi of Allah, direct inspiration, we call it inspiration. And we have another word is also ilham, ilqa. Something comes to your mind suddenly, you don't know. The sixth sense, the intuition. You call, you give them different names, something has come to you. And you, you are yourself surprised. I was not thinking about it. I had not gathered the arguments for and against and weighed them against each other. No, it has come to my mind. So this ilqa, ilham, these things are direct inspiration from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The number two is Allah speaks from behind a curtain as He spoke to Moses. And three is, and Allah sends an angel as a messenger and He then reveals to the human messenger whatever Allah wishes. So this wahi is the third form of wahi, this Quran. But kazalika, now this word kazalika appears for the third time. Twice we had in the very beginning. Kazalika yuhi ilayka wa ilal ladhira min qablik. Wa kazalika ahina ilayka hadal Quran. Quran an Arabian litunzira umma al-Quran wa man hawla. Kazalika, in this way, O Muhammad, in this third way, O Muhammad, we have revealed down and sent down this book to you. Now this wahi is called ruh, I have told you. The angel is ruh, a ruh al-Quds, ruh al -Amin. The ruh, the spirit of Muhammad is ruh. And the communication between the angel and the spirit, human spirit is ruh. Ruh min amrina, from our command, this is from alam e amr These three, three things belong to alam e amr Now all people can't understand this, we have discussed these things. Thing. Many a times during this month. وَكَذَلِكَ وَحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ رُوحًا مِّنْ أَمْرِنَا مَا كُنْتَ تَدْرِيمَ الْكِتَابُ وَلَا الْإِيمَانِ Oh Muhammad, you never knew what is book and what is Iman. You were born to an illiterate people. You were yourself unlettered one. There was no book with your family, your nation, your people. You never learned reading and writing. You never knew what is the book, Allah book, and what's Iman. Ma kunta tadri mal kitabu wal alima. Very important ayah. Even Muhammad got Iman from Quran. Before the revelation of Quran, oh Muhammad, you never knew what is book and what is Iman. Walakin jalna hu nuran. We have made this Quran the light. Nahdi bihi man nashaw min ibadina. And we guide with this whomsoever we like from our servants. And now that Quran has come to you and your spirit is fully lightened by this light of Quran, now you will lead the people to the straight path. Because you have this Quran. This Quran has permeated each and every cell of your existence. You are actually Qur'an. As Hazrat Aisha said, when you know people went to her, Razi Allah Ta'ala Anha, and they said, tell us something about the seerah of, of the Prophet Sallallahu And she retorted, don't you read Qur'an? They said, Ummul Mu'mineen, we read Qur'an very well, but we are asking for seerah. And then she replied, Kana khulukul Quran. His character is Quran, his sira is Quran. He was Quran in, his, in the form of a human flesh and bone. Quran itself. So now you can lead people to the right path. Sirat illahi lazi lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi lard. And what is meant by the right, right path? Right of, the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To whom belong whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth. 
اللہ تصیر العبور بی ہولڈ ٹو اللہ ول بی ریٹرن آل دی میٹرس فار دی فائنل ججمنٹ ایوری تھنگ ول بی پریزینٹیڈ بفور ہیم آن دی ڈے آف ججمنٹ بارک اللہ علی ولکم فی القرآن العظیم و نفانی و یاکم بلا آیات و سرک الحکیم اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing IONA is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about IONA, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.